Here we go. Today is April. Hmm. I don't even know, but it's another Sunday blog, blog podcast. Oh, I'm so out of it this morning. Uh, it was a. It was an interesting week. It was very productive. I got a ton of editing done. Um, got a lot of editing done for a Puba special project that, that we'll be launching in the next few weeks. A lot of alt erotic stuff done. We have um, two more quarantined and horny uh, episodes done. One from Genevieve Hex. She's a contortionist, so I asked her to do like some stuff with her legs behind her head, which is really interesting. She's also got a ton of cats, so you get like once in a while you get a little cameo from a cat showing up running through frame. And uh, there's some funny outtakes where she's like, keet, 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 like shushing the cats away. Also got one from Natasha Gray, who's this uh, tattooed model who's super creative. My Lord, she went and um, got a nurse outfit and had a face mask. And uh, she had this giant sex doll, which is like a a male sex doll. Oh, my Lord. Really cool. Um, When I see people do things like that, like on their own and get super creative, it it drives me to keep going and being creative as well. Uh, I have so many ideas I want to do now, especially for carjackers while under quarantine. I have a ton of ideas that I'm going to start implementing. It's going to cost me a little bit of money, but, uh, you know, I <laughs> I just need to do some stuff to, to keep sane besides editing and trying to clean my house. Um, my plan is to move out of Vegas by mid to mid June, that's when my lease is up. I've been there for five years now, I think four years, and who knows how many more times I'll be going back there. So it's not worth spending that much money per month to really be there. Especially I haven't been there in six months since my injury. So got to figure that out. I have about fifty crates of props there, and so much badass furniture that I bought uh, to furnish that house. When I first moved there, I spent over twelve grand furnishing a lot of that house, and a lot of the stuff's still there. So I need to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. But the cool thing is, uh, this week I, w- I actually was on Instagram and I saw this video about this guy who's four hundred and almost seventy pounds, and he got on the DDP yoga. Within a year, he lost one hundred ninety-eight pounds. So it's a story. It's just it's really cool because like it starts off with him taking off a shirt and going, okay, this is day one, and I'm um, doing this um, virally to show people that I'm serious and lost 198 pounds in a year by just walking, exercising, eating healthy, and doing DDP yoga. To a point, uh, Bert Kreischer, who I'm not a big fan of, but Bert Kreischer did a whole thing with the with this guy and so did DDP, and it's just kind of in, in, inspiring to see people do that. Um and I've always wondered by DDP Yoga because I've seen a lot of people change their lives. Like he changed Scott Hall's life, who was a professional wrestler who was a complete mess and alcoholic and would like almost pass out in the ring from being drunk. It's Jake the Snake Roberts, and I think a lot of people know Jake the Snake Roberts' story of um, how bad of a drug problem he had. And, that, and he got both of those guys clean, healthy. Uh, so I was like, screw it, man. Let me try it. So last night I went and... Um, Signed up for a year, downloaded the app, and watched all these videos all night last night. And this morning I started. Started with a with with a very light workout. And let me tell you, even the light workout was like, oof, because um, I've been inactive for almost six months. I mean, like there were, t- you know, between eighth and ninth surgery, I had a little bit of time to heal up and went and actually did some production work, and then back, you know, to for another surgery and then out again. To a point, my left leg, you know, the, the, the hurt leg, the knee was just useless. Um, as of like a week ago, I couldn't even put any weight on it going up the stairs. Now I can walk up the stairs with 
still a lot of pain, but there's enough strength where I could walk on it. So about a week ago, I started doing exercises at home. And last night, I was like, man, I'm just going to do this DDP yoga thing. Uh, you get on the regimen and you go, you know, and uh, it teaches you discipline. Whatever you decide to do, DDP yoga or whatever else, it teaches you discipline to just stick to that discipline. That was, I think, um, when I went vegan for a little bit. <laughs> the one thing about it was like not the, the, the eating vegan was the issue. It was uh, It was teaching you to be responsible. So, you know, you're hungry and you're driving by a fast food place. If you're not vegan, you just kind of just drive right in there and just get whatever you can to eat quickly. But if you're eating healthy and you're sticking to it, you're making sure I'm going to keep driving, I'm going to deal with this, and I'm going to get somewhere where I could actually get healthy food. And whether it's doing it for health reasons or doing it because you want to stay productive and on focus and on point about, about yourself, that's what matters. And I think with DDP Yoga, that's what it is. They give you a schedule. So many videos, so many things that you plug in um, and you get points and you get rewards. And uh, it's really cool. It's like a giant community of people. So I was like, fuck it, man. Let's just go for it. So I signed up, did my first um, exercise today. I was thinking this morning. So my plan is to wake up. I usually wake up 6.30 in the morning. Now I set my alarm for 7 a.m. every day and it's 7 a.m. DDPY. And that's what the alarm is called. And uh, I'm going to be doing that every morning. Besides my other exercises, uh, I'm debating this week jumping my elliptical finally. Before I got injured, I was doing about an hour a day on elliptical. I love the elliptical. I mean, it's hard. Like the first time I jumped on elliptical, I did two minutes and I, was, I thought I was going to die. I'm like, how do fucking people do this? And then I eventually went up to over an hour. And, uh, you know, it helped to watch sports and, and, you know, just get right in the zone. Now there's no sports. So it's. A little more difficult to kind of watch like whatever TV shows, but uh, I'm on the mission to do this thing and do it the right way. I used to tell my friends that if I die by fifty, I'm good, man, because uh, I have a hell of a reel in mainstream, in horror, my education, in adult movies. I've won awards. I've got high praise. I've done things the right way. I've treated people the right way. I've been mistreated many times, not in the right way, but I always kept my head up and always did things the the, the proper way, proper way of dealing with uh, people and uh, treating people right. So I've always like, well, shit, man, if I go, I go. But then when I almost went, that's when I realized, like, like holy shit, I have so much more to accomplish um, and so much more to do. So let's fight through this. <laughs> horrible situation and once you get out of it you uh, stay focused uh, I think that issue is with a lot of people when they go through things you know they pray to do this they uh, they promise themselves or promise others I'm going to change and do this and a lot of people don't you know because once you get through it you kind of forget the struggle you went through so you forget it's kind of like a lot of people that uh, make money and they come from nothing and then all of a sudden it goes to their fucking head and they start acting like pieces of shit same type of thing, you know. Uh, don't forget the struggle you went through. And my struggle is so minimal compared to so many people in the world or even my neighbors probably. So I could never complain. All I could do is just move forward and do things the right way. And that's the plan. My plan is to stick to this and uh, stick to this yoga thing, uh, DDP yoga. You know, I texted my friend this morning. and I'm like, I'm going to start DDP. Why? And she's like, what's that? I'm like, it's... DDP yoga and she's like you guys yoga and I'm like okay okay yeah. this is different it's not like I'm going to to a yoga with a yoga mat <laughs> in like you know West Hollywood with a bunch of like preppy you know douchebags or whatever no 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 I'm doing it this way and I'm sure but when I get in other classes of DDP yoga on the app it's going to be similar to that but I'd rather do something with someone like him who's helped so many people <laughs> than, than some some rich white folks, you know, in West Hollywood, you know, in their in their pretty uh, gyms and shit like that. So not knocking that, but that's not what I'm into. So uh, that's the that's the game plan, you know, stay on track, stay focused and uh, move forward. Um, gosh, so this quarantine, uh, you know, sometimes it starts uh, like even to me, like it started to get to me. I'm like, oh, my God. I I'm at home. I'm just, I just, 
eat, edit, exercise, watch TV. I've I, I've um, went through so many shows. I finished The Expanse, four seasons of it in a week. Um, I started watching a show called Kingdom that John, my filmmaking partner, suggested. And um, at first I was like, this is just really strange and weird. And, and then as the episodes kept going, I'm like, this is actually really cool because it's super gory. It's basically like samurais versus zombies kind of thing. But it's got a lot of really dark humor in it and some humor. Like you really have to like pay attention and listen. I, I don't watch it with subtitles. I, I watch it with the English dubbing because I don't have time to sit and read and miss what's going on on the screen. And some of the lines are hilarious. We're going to shoot you with our with our uh, arrows and they're going to pierce your body. You know, shit like that. Like it's it's pretty funny. There's some funny stuff in there. So if you're into zombies, you're into samurais, you're into gore. And that's a show to watch. <clears throat> no nudity, obviously, because it's a, it's an Asian uh, show. I assume Chinese, but I think it's Chinese. I hope it's Chinese because I'm saying it's Chinese. Uh, even though the funny thing was, I was talking to my friend Chang this morning through text, and uh, he's Chinese, and uh, we were talking about the movie. Uh, Good Boys, which I just watched, and I loved it. Good Boys. Oh my god, it's it's basically like Hangover, but with like teenage boys who say way too many inappropriate things. I think it's like the new new style of comedy. You use young kids and have them say really inappropriate sexual things. They did that with cog blockers with teenage girls, which was funny because it's funny to watch like young people say shit like blowjobs and lube and anal and things like that. And uh, Good Boys is all about that, like young kids just like throwing around words like anal and blowjobs and and things like that uh do you hear that that's i don't know if you could hear in the background but uh my girl cat it took over for my boy cat my boy cat used to cry when i would go upstairs to my office to to edit to do work to do whatever and he would sit down the stairs and cry for me to come downstairs she never did that he passes away and now she's doing it so seriously his neediness went from him to her Speaking of Pringles, he arrived uh, two days ago in his brand new home, which is a cabin with his name on it. It's a white cabin. It's beautiful. It was pricey, but it was beautiful. It's beautiful. So my plan is um, I got a white picket fence for it, and I got three uh, legendary dead rapper uh, Funko Pops, Easy e Biggie Smalls, and Tupac. And the reason I got Biggie Smalls is because I used to call Pringles Kitty Smalls and Notorious C.A.T. because he was so fat and big and and fantastic. Uh, so once all that arrives, because he's here, I have the biggie uh, figure. Once everything arrives, I'm going to make a display. I'm going to post it online because uh, that little cat, the big cat, the 30-pounder, deserves it. He was uh, an amazing creature. Um, yeah, so... I've been uh, just binge watching that stuff. I tonight's Sunday, and I'm gonna be watching uh, 90 Day Fiance. I love that show. I watch it with my mom every Sunday. I got hooked on it while I was in the hospital. She was watching it in my room, and I'm like, "What is this?" And she's like, "It's this, this, this," and I and I got hooked on it. So hooked because it's like a train wreck. Every other couple, majority of the couples are train wrecks. It's an American who meets somebody in another country. They start dating over the phone, and then eventually uh, they go and visit that person in their country. Then they have to get married within ninety days to get to to bring that person over to become a citizen or get their K one visa, whatever. So uh, there's a lot of, I mean, as as you can imagine, there's a lot of people uh, from other countries that just want to come to the United States, so they'll use dumb Americans. And honestly, Americans are dumb. They're kind of clueless and ignorant to how the rest of the world works so, hence why so much nigerian emails get <laughs> get so much money out of american dumb americans because americans don't get it you know uh just naive i shouldn't say dumb naive and there's a lot of that i mean like there's in this new season there's two people getting catfish one guy seven years he's been talking to this ukrainian chick only through a um a chat he's spent over a hundred thousand dollars on her Never met her, never talked to her, doesn't even know what her voice is, only through typing and whatever pictures he's seen of her. 
He's went to Ukraine four times. In this this show, he's there for the fourth time. The first three times, she had excuses why she couldn't meet him. Brother died. She got sick. Something else happened. So he's there again, and it's fantastic because we all know she doesn't exist. It's some fat Russian dude behind a computer just you know saying these things to him, and and this guy's like. Uh, Lana and I have been in a relationship for seven years. We're boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm showing up to marry her. Idiot. Holy shit. But it makes for great television. There's another person, and the woman with six kids also lives in Vegas. He lives in Vegas, this dude. And she's been talking to this guy from London, from London who's like like gorgeous dude, buff, you know, chiseled jaw, all that bullshit. And the few times you hear his voice, he sounds Nigerian. And her daughter's even like, he sounds Nigerian. And she's like, no, 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 he's British. Uh, and he's a catfish. Like, you could tell all the signs from catfish. And now it's gotten to a point on the show where she sent this guy nudes and the guy's trying to blackmail her. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Yeah, so I kind of watch Netflix and, and Amazon Prime when I get a chance. Uh, and then I do a lot of editing. Now I'm doing a lot of the exercising and I got to clean my house. So there's just like a lot on my plate, plus healing my leg. You know, at night, it's my leg hurts because it's healing. Plus with diabetes, your, your feet and legs hurt anyways from diabetes. You don't feel it on the outside. You feel it from the inside out. So you get that nerve pain. Ooh, try driving, and then all of a sudden that nerve pain kicks into your into your um, pedal foot, and you just kind of like uh, wince and just hold on to that pain, you know. Uh, now with the, with the, with the new wonderful scars that are still healing and all that pain um it's an adventure but it is what it is i still have a leg i can't complain i have all my toes which even though i fought to have them remove one toe so i could have a better story but all the toes are there i do have uh, the the huge three scars um i just can't wait to put start putting sneakers on and walking around I mean, I do. I have sneakers. I, I, I bought some workout sneakers that are like slip-ons that are pretty cool. I went for a drive yesterday. I need to like keep. I need to start my car so the start does the car doesn't die. So I just drove around, drove around the empty streets. And you know what got me sad was seeing people walk in the street with masks on. Literally every person. It was like well, like one or two didn't have it. You know they had like a run their wrist or whatever. But yeah, you're just going, man. Here's the reality, right? What a fucking reality for the world. Um. Do you know, hopefully when this is all done, people will think about each other more and people will think about what we're doing to this planet uh, and how quickly it all could go away. We all just thought it was a joke. These horror movies with like epidemics, pandemics, not epidemics. This is the one thing I did learn over this whole Corona thing is it's pandemic, not epidemic. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm Russian. I have an excuse. But this week. So what I got going on this week, I got a ton of editing left. I got, um, I'm going to start shooting stuff for carjackers with myself, and then I'm going to most likely reach out to girls. Uh, I've spoken to Leah Falcon, who's completely down. Uh, I think I'm going to use a couple of the girls that I know. Uh, one actually did something for for Quentin and Horny. I'm going to start shooting Ho Hunters uh, Part 2 with Bragg Zagan's inserts, which is my character. I'm also going to do something because, like, I, you know, I do this podcast. Uh, I actually had re- Joe, Joe, I'm just not going to give his last name, but Joe reached out to me, and he's a he's a affiliate guy. He's a um, traffic guy, and he wants to help me blow up the podcast, which is amazing. He made my day. Uh, I, I do this all on my own. You know, I record them. I record the video of them. I edit them. I put put them up. I edit the banners. I, I, I do all the stuff, and besides doing everything else, and I love it because it lets me, lets me, express myself, share stories. I have so many more stories to share that are just insane. So many people I want to have on the show to tell their stories and just get to know people. Um, and th- the bigger audience I have, the the better it is for for me, for the podcast, for everybody else. So that's the plan, you know. So I I had I last Sunday I did a long podcast oh my gosh i didn't think it was going to go this long but it went almost two hours with rocky emerson rocky emerson is this gorgeous porn star in the industry she's covered in tattoos and super down to earth she uh she's six three six three think about think about that 
in heels. High heels, she's probably like six, eight, six, nine. So we did one with her, and it was going to be about an hour. And then we got talking about other things like she shoots on film. She does stills on film with a medium format camera. Are you fucking kidding me? Fantastic. So we got into all that stuff. They also did um, a long podcast with my filmmaking partner, John Gonzalez. Uh, my par- We've done, I don't know, probably a dozen movies together. But the one that stands out the most is we did our series of horror comedies called Roadside Killer. We did. We, sh- we have two that are completely done. Both went to film festivals. We have one that we never finished editing. So I did two long podcasts last week. And oh, the one thing I did surprise him with was that I spoke to my friend at Troma. And Troma has their uh, pay-per-view channel on YouTube called Troma Now. So he said once we get everything digitized for Roadside Killer and send them the links they'll throw it up on trauma now and they're like you know you get a little bit of money i'm like (laughs) fantastic we'll get some lunch money hopefully but the point is to be part of the trauma family which is something i've always wanted to be i did get in as an extra into uh uh, the last movie um i forget the name of it it's uh shakespeare's shitstorm or something like that uh so i'm in trauma, hopefully I didn't get it out. I'm in the new trauma movie, uh, and if we get a roadside killer series on trauma now, that'd be fucking amazing, so amazing. Uh, as a f- horror filmmaker and growing up on Toxy movies, this this like is the highlight of uh, my filmmaking career. Besides stuff John Landis did for us for our Y2K movie, um, but also talking about the podcast. Many people that know me and are good friends with the, of mine know my condo in, the, in L.A. This condo is haunted. So there's two bedrooms. One is my office, the sports room, and the other one is the bedroom. That I only sleep up there if it's necessary. Like if somebody's here and they're staying, or they don't want to sleep upstairs in the bedroom by themselves, then I'll sleep either up there with them or uh, they'll sleep on the couch and I'll sleep on the, on the bed upstairs with the lights on. But it's pretty freaky at night. I mean, super freaky. It's freaky during the day. You feel like someone's in the room with you, but at night especially. So here's what I'm going to do. My whole life, everywhere I live, has been haunted. I've ha- I have some crazy ghost stories. So the plan is I'm going to do my podcast in the haunted bedroom at night with the lights off, with the night vision camera. And I have a glow-in-the-dark Ouija board that I bought years ago as a prop. I'm not going to play it. I'm just going to lay it out and let it sit there. And I'm just going to do a podcast in my haunted bedroom, tell ghost stories, and see where it goes from there. Hopefully, it doesn't go anywhere except me telling ghost stories and being completely, completely freaked out. But that's the game plan. Uh, I can't wait to do the podcast because I want to listen back to it and see if we catch anything. I also want to watch back the night, uh, night vision footage to see if there's anything that pops on. I kind of hope I catch something. Kind of, I really hope I don't because then it validates a lot of the my concerns about that room and uh, some of the nightmares I've had regarding that room. But um, I'll share those stories. And uh, all in the dark, you know, like all these ghost hunters, they go around through these haunted places and, and do their stories. So I figured I might as well do my podcast in there. And uh, maybe I'll reach out to like Zach Bagans and people like that and be like, hey, I'm going to do this. Any suggestions? And we'll see. We'll see. Uh, But that's the plan for this week. Uh, I got a lot going on. So much. I had Jonathan from the office bring me a bunch of props so I could start shooting uh, my inserts for carjackers and for hoe hunters. And that's about it. I think um, this is my my rant. My Sunday Attack of the Seventh Day podcast is done. If you're listening to it, please spread the word. Let people know to subscribe and share. I'm really uh, working hard at this and getting better at it and getting more comfortable talking on the microphone. It's easier to talk to somebody so you could bounce stories off each other than just sitting there talking to a microphone. But for now, that's all I got while the quarantine's still on and, you know, and my talks on the phone with people for the podcast but for now that's that's what it is and uh i have a plenty more to share and talk about and if anybody has questions suggestions corrections i would love feedback because uh i am new to this it's fun it's exciting 
and uh, I can't wait to do more. I can't wait to share the rest of the podcast that I've recorded already and uh, just keep going. I'm constantly going on the website, seeing how many people downloaded my clips of my podcasts from around the world and things like that. So please share, please listen. And uh, yeah, and then Wednesday, I got another good one coming up. So stay tuned. Kingsliven.com.